This Mother's Day, give the gift of gardening to the special woman in your life, whether that be your mother, your wife, your girlfriend. What I think we need to remember as we head into this weekend is that women are largely responsible around the world for feeding our populations. It is important to realize that most of the production that is done in food is done on small scale acreages, family run farms. What we've been doing here at Local Harvest is practicing no-till farming for a number of years. And the gardening course that we're offering will teach you how to get higher productivity, better food, higher yields, and all of this with less work. We can teach you how to garden in a way that improves the health of the soil without compromising the health of this planet working in ecological balance with nature. I'm going to show you what no-till looks like before, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like after. We're gonna go back to another part of the farm right now, and we're gonna have a deeper look into the soil and find out what it looks like before no-till intervention happens. Here we are, Dan, we're on your property, and and you can noticeably tell brown, gray. What is this section of land, this final quadrant on your property? This is a piece of, of land that we've not been farming very effectively for, for a number of years. It's been weeds and uh, a little bit of pasture, but we really haven't put any organic material down on, on this area. I wanna show the before and after of no-till gardening. And this area here, um, hasn't been cared for well at all. It's been very mismanaged and I want to show you how we can take this into something that uh, looks completely different and something that's able to sustain life and provide an abundance of food and great tasting food. So I'm going to dig down because that's really uh, going to be indicative. So you'll notice how much work is required to actually get this shovel down into the ground and I have to be careful I don't break it because it is rock hard and you'll notice first of all the color we're in the grays a little bit of blue and uh, it is extremely heavy clay so I'm just gonna break this apart and you can see even some uh, orangey reddish brown in there and if I smell uh, it doesn't have a very great smell it smells like it's quite anaerobic and there's a reason for that there's no air or oxygen reaching down into the bottom part of this soil and as far as I can tell there's no discernible life here whatsoever I do see some wormholes it gives me a bit of hope and it's just really really hard if we were to plant in here I don't think we'd get good results at all. You'd probably want to till. Exactly, you would. And what most people would do here is they'd throw some compost on the surface and then they'd till it in. And we want to show you that there's a better way. You'll be able to change the texture of the soil all the way down to probably two to three feet. I mean, that might take 15 years, but after six, seven years, you'll notice um, a, a remarkable difference. Yeah, and what I noticed is that you're, you're, um, you're farming heavy, right? This, this is, you're building soil while extracting. That's the real miracle that I think is taking place. It's yeah. possible with no-till. You're not just putting a, some cover crops down and, uh, you know, like Gabe Brown has built some incredible soil, but it's because he's, he's also not farming it, so he's getting the, the really high yields. But what's notable here is that you can farm uh, very heavily and yet still build soil. The objective with no-till gardening is that we leave the land better every year after being able to pull from it an abundant yield. How can we, how can we do that? And we're gonna talk about that in a different part of the, part of the farm here. Yeah, let's do it. And I, and I without exaggeration, I, I um, wait till you see how easily Dan digs up the next amount. It's incredible. Let's go do it. Yep. 
these radishes are are absolutely incredible and without fail I, I believe that I don't see a single one here that is worm eaten that is damaged in either way by any pest and the reason for that is the biodiversity that we have on the surface of the soil it's full of life there are organisms all over that are responsible for taking out the bad guys like say the cabbage maggot In fact, I, I would hazard to believe that this beetle here is probably feeding on things like cabbage maggot and taking them out before they can become a problem. These larger predators on the surface indicate to us that soil health and the soil food web is, in, is flourishing in, in this microbiome here that we have just within this bed. So even if your mom knows how to garden, maybe she's not tilling, maybe she's got raised beds, but maybe she's a miracle grow gardener. Maybe she'd like to learn how you can team with microbes, how you can do as nature does, how you can work with nature to have the most amazing tasting, looking, vibrant, healthy, pest resistant produce on the planet and fresh so fresh and soil like this this was hard packed clay anyone who's been gardening or farming in this area knows exactly what this would look like this looks like it was just tilled dan it does indeed it's so soft and and it feels so good between your fingers and in the summertime underneath your feet when you walk bare feet through the field I'm going to do a little bit of digging now because I think it's really important for us to get down underneath the ground to the root of the matter and really find out why food tastes better when we do not destroy the beautiful pathways that the organisms in the soil like the earthworms and the arthropods and the millipedes and the centipedes and the isopods and all the other community of life in the soil have created. Let's not destroy that. Let's keep it in place. Let's keep the root system of the previous generation of plants in place. Let's, no, let's not disturb any of that. Let's keep it all intact. And uh, I'm going to go for a little dig right now. Cool. And we're going to take a look at what we have down below the surface. So I'm going to try to drive my shovel in. And you can notice that it goes in with ease. Yep. And I'm going to pull this up as carefully as possible so that we can see the layers here. First thing I want to point out is the depth of the root system of this simple radish plant. You know, you don't think of that as having a whole lot of roots when in fact it does. And the, the reason the roots are going so low to absorb the minerals and the nutrients from deep down is because the soil is so very soft. And I can just break this apart like a crumbly chocolate cake. And you can see the porosity in the soil. Look at all those holes. We've got big holes. Oh, wow, look at that, yeah. And we've got extremely small holes. So what's this hole here? That's definitely an earthworm. That's a larger of the species of worms that we have in the soil. But you can see the clay particles mixed in here. And notice how the soil holds and maintains its structure, but when it's squeezed it just kind of falls apart into this beautiful crumbly like material that no one has ever been tilling and this we're going down my my shovel here is approximately a foot so now we're at the clay level we're at the clay level but even within this layer you can see all the organic material and what's it smell like i know when we dig up on the, the clay bordering our farm uh, it reeks even about eight ten inches down that's because it's anaerobic there's there's no oxygen in, in in the soil you're referring to here we can't help but get oxygen deep down into the soil and when we get a good rainfall this soil is like a sponge it can absorb all the rain and the water that falls and we don't have any puddling on the land as a result can we go deeper like into the the clay below and absolutely and see? i'm just going to pull some of this aside
right here. So this is at approximately the one foot level. And how does that smell? Like good earth, like the good earth. Okay, so we got a lot more clay at that level. Beautiful, crumbly. And if I take out and try to go down probably 16 inch level here, a little more work involved. And you can see the worms, they're, they're pulling the organics deep down. And look here. That is beautiful. That's a radish root, okay? It's a radish root right here. 18 inches down. Way down there. And this can be pulled apart as well. And you can see the porosity in there as well. And you how see does that smell? Lots of organics. There is only sweetness emanating from this. That's incredible. Beautiful earth. Now you could imagine that had farming practices over the last 40, 50, 70, or 100 years been using no-till deep mulching system where all we're doing year after year is a small layer of compost on the surface. If we had been practicing that for generations, we'd be able to go down two feet, three feet, probably with bare hands digging down into this beautiful soil and the results speak for themselves. Less pest, better tasting food, less work, less weeds, and less uh, drainage issues uh, as well. So there's so many benefits for, for no-till. And that's a gift that we want you to give to the woman in your life who means a lot to you.